Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check a couple of budget-friendly soldering irons which are going to help you to fix your electronic equipment either at home or on the go. In this video I'm going to test these two soldering irons which come from a relatively new company named Secure, the SQ110 AC soldering station and the SQ001 which is an upgraded version of the famous TS100 DC soldering iron. In addition, I'm also going to test the SH-72 portable DC soldering iron, which costs only $12. Let's start with the secure SQ-110 AC soldering station. In terms of packaging, inside this box, along with the soldering iron, you can find the user manual both in English and Chinese, a spare soldering tip, and a simple metal soldering iron holder. You should note that the SQ-A110 is available in two versions. I've got the European version, which comes with a European plug and works with 220 volts, and you can also get the US version, which comes with the US plug, and most important, works with 110 volts. In terms of specs, this soldering iron features a built-in accelerometer, so if you're not going to move it around for a certain amount of time, it's going to enter sleep mode. It features an on-off switch. Its temperature range is between 100 to 500 degrees Celsius and both heating core and soldering tip are replaceable. After connecting its AC plug to a power outlet, we can turn on the soldering iron by pressing the power button. Now on the very bright LED, we can see the current temperature of its core, and as you can see, now it's not heating. In order to start the heating operation, you will need to long press the K1 button, but before that, I'm going to quickly show you how to configure the soldering iron. Long pressing the K2 button is going to enable you to first toggle between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Long pressing it again will enable you to set the temperature of the soldering iron and it goes all the way down to 100 and all the way up to 500 degrees Celsius. If you want to save the settings, you can press both K1 and K2 buttons together or you can simply wait for two seconds. After setting up the temperature, long pressing the K2 button again is going to enable you to calibrate the temperature of the soldering iron. And finally, the last option will enable you to set the sleep timer in minutes. It goes all the way down to one minute and all the way up to 30 minutes. I think that five minutes should be a decent amount of time. And it means that if you're not going to move the soldering iron around for five minutes, it's going to enter sleep mode and the temperature is going to go down to 100 degrees Celsius. Now the soldering iron is set to 300 degrees Celsius. Let's start the heating operation by long pressing the K1 button. And as you can see, the temperature rises very fast and it took less than 10 seconds for the core temperature of the soldering iron to reach 300 degrees Celsius. Using this thermal thermometer, we can read its temperature. And as you can see at its hottest point, the temperature is about 260 degrees Celsius. When the SQA110 is set to heating mode, you can also control its temperature by long or short pressing the K1 button. So if you want to increase the temperature, you can simply press the K2 button. And if you want to decrease it, you can short press or long press the K1 button. So now, for example, let's turn it all the way up to 500 degrees Celsius, which is not really recommended, especially for delicate electronics. So now the soldering iron is heating and the temperature limit of my thermometer is 300 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, this is the highest value that I can measure using this device. Now let's test the sleep feature. The timer is now set to one minute. The heating operation is now turned on. And now, as you can see, the temperature starts decreasing since it's entered sleep mode. In order to wake up the device, you can simply shake the soldering iron. And as you can see, now the temperature starts increasing. As a safety measure, in case you're not going to wake up the soldering iron within five minutes, it's going to enter deep sleep mode. And then your only option to resume the heating operation will be to restart the device. After testing it out, I can tell you that the SQA110 seems to work pretty well. And it's a good candidate to replace my good old soldering station due to its ergonomics, safety features, and the fact that it's going to take less real estate on my desk. 
Moving on to the SQ001 Portable Smart DC Soldering Iron, which according to Secure is an upgrade version of the very successful TS100 soldering iron which I've been using for the last two years. As you can see mine is beaten up, first of all because it's been in a backpack for the last two years, and second of all because I've stupidly tried to force the wrong DC connector into its 55 by 25 mm plug and I ended up breaking it. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the main control unit, the soldering tip which is of course replaceable and compatible with every tip on the market that is compatible with the TS100 soldering iron, a bag with the hex key driver and extra screws, a small stand and a piece of foam that you should dump in water in order to clean the soldering iron tip, the user manual, and the 1 meter long DC to XC60 power adapter. In order to install the soldering iron tip, you will need to first release this screw over here, then install the tip and fasten the screw. The 5.5 by 2.5 mm DC plug is located over here. The working voltage of the soldering iron is between 12 to 24 volts, but you can still use 6 S type of batteries in order to power it up. Next to the DC plug, you can also find a micro USB port, which is only used for updating the firmware of the soldering iron and you won't be able to use it in order to power it up. After connecting a battery, the soldering iron is going to be turned on, but it's not going to start hitting until you're going to press button A. Now you can adjust the temperature by pressing button A or B, so you can set it all the way up to 450 degrees Celsius and all the way down to 100 degrees Celsius in 10 degrees increments. The soldering iron hits pretty quickly, and it's going to take about 15 seconds to reach 300 degrees Celsius. In case you would like to return to standby mode, you will need to hold both A and B buttons together. When the soldering iron is in standby mode, you can enter its settings by short pressing button B, and then you can toggle between the different options by short pressing button A or button B, and change an option by long pressing it. In this table, you can find the list of different options, and if you'd like, you can pause the video and check it out. So overall, as I mentioned before, I have a very good experience using the TS100 soldering iron, and I believe that using this variant will provide you with the same experience. Now by the way, I did try the TS80 soldering iron, which is very similar to the TS100, except it's using a USB-C port in order to power it up, and it's also using a different mechanism in order to change the soldering tip, but unfortunately, I don't have a good experience using it, since mine just stopped working after about 10 minutes using it. Finally, the last product that I would like to show you in this video is the SH72 soldering iron. This is a kind of extremely budget-friendly version of the TS100, except it's lacking its advanced features. Inside its box, you can find the user manual, the main board, and the soldering tip. In terms of specs, just like the TS100, its working voltage is between 12 to 24 volts, and it's using a 2.5 by 5.5 mm DC plug. Now when installing the tip, the most important thing that you need to pay attention to is that you shouldn't put the tip like that because otherwise the soldering iron is not going to work. So you have to remove this cap, put it on the tip like that, and then install it and make sure that it's properly secured. Setting up the temperature of the soldering iron is done using this rotatable dial. When it's going to be rotated all the way to the left, it's going to be set to 220 degrees Celsius, and if you're going to rotate it clockwise all the way to the right, it's going to be set to 400 degrees Celsius. Now unlike the TS100, the SH72 is going to be turned on as soon as you're going to plug in a battery, so you should be careful. Now it's set to 200 degrees Celsius, so let's check its temperature and see how long it takes for the soldering iron to heat up. And according to my measurements, the maximum measure temperature is around 96 degrees Celsius and it took about 20 seconds for the southern iron to achieve this temperature. So now let's set it all the way up to 400 degrees Celsius. You can also see that I'm measuring the current in watts and previously the peak watt was around 30. So now let's measure the temperature again. And now I'm getting about 217 degrees Celsius so as far as I can tell, they simply confused between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. After giving it a little try, I can tell you that 
it works pretty well. But the only question is how long this pretty cheap product is going to last, especially if we compare it with the more expensive TS100. Now the temperature of the soldering iron is about 220 degrees Celsius. I'm going to unplug the battery and see how long it's going to take it to reach 50 degrees Celsius, which is a relatively safe temperature. After about a minute, it's down to 100 degrees Celsius. After two minutes, it's down to 60 degrees Celsius. And finally, after about three minutes, it's down to 50 degrees Celsius, so we can touch the soldering iron without hurting ourselves. So overall, if you're looking for a budget-friendly alternative to the TS100, I think that you should consider getting the SH72 as long as you understand its limitations. And by the way, in case you wonder, the soldering tip is not compatible with the soldering tip of the TS100, as it's just not going to go all the way down. Maybe you can modify it, but out of the box, it's just not going to work. So that's going to be it for my review of these three soldering irons. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. As always, I would like to thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. And if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.